Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, I've been doing this job now for around nine years. There's one thing I learned very early on. It's that small Japanese automatic cars always sell immediately. They're just really popular. They're quite difficult to get hold of, so I can't make a business entirely out of those. But as soon as you get one in stock, within 48 hours, they're always gone. So with that in mind, when I was offered this automatic Corolla yesterday, I immediately said yes. Now it's quite an old car, this. It goes back to 2002. But it's only done, I think, 85,000 miles. So it isn't high mileage. It's silver. But crucially, it's only got two pedals. So I just know it'll sell. Price-wise, it was cheap, which worries me slightly. I've paid just £400 for this car. <laughs> so I'm not expecting a pearl. Having said that, this era of Corolla were always quite good. I've had loads of them over the years. In fact, about six or seven years ago, I took a cheap one in parts exchange and then drove it all the way down to Spain. And then it stayed there for about six months and then I drove it all the way back. It was a really solid car, that. Never went wrong. There was an incident one time where I got stopped by the Guardia Civil because the road tax had expired. And then I had to uh, quickly tax it online. Anyway, I didn't get arrested. I wasn't carted off to Alloran, so all was fine. Back to today's car then. I don't know an awful lot about it. So, without wasting any more time, we might as well go and have a look, hadn't we? Come on then, off we pop. Well, we're here, and it looks like a sorry-looking 22-year-old Corolla. But it's automatic, let's not forget that. In fairness, I could smarten that up quite easily. Once the headlamp's buffing, the whole thing wants a very good clean and a fresh set of plates, and I just know I can picture what that'll look like now. There's a, a dent master job on the near side front wing. That will pop out, actually. It's quite a, quite a straightforward dent. It's filthy, but I know it'll clean up well. I just know there's profit. I mean, I shouldn't be getting excited about this sort of thing, should I? But I just know there's profit in that. Sadly, it's only a three door, not a five, so it's not as practical. It's missing its uh, near side indicator thing. The near side repeater lens is missing, but that'll be about five quid, won't it? Someone's taking it onto the, uh, onto the continent. It's got those stickers on the headlamps. They can come off. All right, well, that's not bad, is it? That's not the end of the world. I think, as always, we'll do a vehicle history check. Now, I know I should do this before, but I get these from a trusted source, so if there is a problem, I can always go back. I had this recently with a, a Mini that I bought, and it turned out to be a, a Cat D. Anyway, at its value, it didn't really matter. The same with this one. So what we're going to do is go to carvertical.com, type in the reg or the VIN. Now, in this case, we know it is Echo Yankee 02 SPIV. SPV, check vehicle. By the way, if you want to do these checks for yourself, and I urge you to do so before, ideally, before you hand over any cash for a used car or motorbike, you can save yourself 20% if you use my promo code HIGHPEAK. That's HIGHPEAK, all one word, for 20% off. Right, and the report's ready. So, it's checked databases in 35 different countries. Ah, uh, okay. I swear I didn't know about this previously. Anyway, so it's never been clocked. There's no outstanding finance, but it has been involved in a recorded accident, just like that Mini the other day. But still, at £400, it makes no difference. It does limit what I can ask for it, obviously, but it still makes no difference, really. It's never been stolen. The only reason I'm sat with the engine running, by the way, is because it's quite a warm day and my air conditioning's on. Now, if you look at the MOT history, it's fairly consistent every single year, and it was last MOT'd in September last year at 72,000 miles. So it's quite low, isn't it? There we go. If we go down to damage, there's an amber warning there for damage. So it was marked as an insurance write-off. Now, for a bit more detail, uh, it was recorded as a Category N write-off, so that's non-structural. They changed it from a Cat D and Cat C to a Cat N and Cat S. So Cat N is the least sort of... Um, least bad? That's poor English, isn't it? Uh, so that's non-structural. Cat S is structural. So that could have just been, you know, a split bumper or a cracked lamp or something. The front end looks quite original, so I suspect it wasn't the front end. Might have had a, a whack up its... Um, rear end. Um, so, the average market price for such a vehicle is two and a half grand. That is if it's not a cat N, by the way. So it's worth less than that. It's 1.6 automatic. If we go down to its history, there have been a few issues here. Then it changed owner in 2021. It failed an MOT, and then it passed. And then it failed an MOT, and then it passed. Right. Let's go and have a look then, shall we? See what I've bought. Well, the first bit of good news is that we've got all the keys. So we've got one with its buttons missing. That's an easy repair. 
two, with buttons this time. And then three, we've got the master key there. Still, never use this, still with its, um, how can I describe that politely? Still with its sheath. <laughs> right, so let's go have a look. Right then, there's a dent on the driver's door, but I mean, for this age and value, it doesn't really matter, but there is a pronounced dent there. It's very grubby. Look at all the algae and green rubbish on it. It will clean up though this, I'm convinced. I suspect the damage then was round the back because that bumper's not sitting right. There's a gap there that I could get my, uh, my fingers into. So that's not quite right. But on the back tire then, we've got a Falcon. Decent brand, on about three mil of tread. Discs look a little bit ropey, but not the end of the world. It's got alloys, metallic paint. The whole paintwork just looks really dull where, where it's been parked up for a while. And you can sort of see, someone's painted this. There's a definite line there. And it feels a bit rough. Right, another clue that this has had an accident at the back is that the front plate is original and the back plate isn't. The back plate's much newer from somebody called Grand Auto Services. So that's where my money would be. I think it's had a, um, a smash at the back, which is why that bumper doesn't sit properly. Still, that could, have, that, that could be all it had. If we look here, was looking on the glass then for uh, etchings of the of the reg, but there aren't any. Uh, that's where I suspect it's had its damage then. Anyway, back to tyres. We've got a Devante on the front, on about on about five mil actually. That's all right. Very good. Like I say, with the headlamps buffed and a fresh set of plates, that will look so much better, so much better. Have we got a matching Devante? Uh, no. This one looks very old, actually. This is an, an 600 by a company called an, Annie 8. Never heard of it. Literally never heard of it. Every single time I do one of these videos, I learn a new tyre brand. That one's a tyre, really. I might get a matching Devante. That's the repeater that's uh, missing its lens cover. It's no big deal. Can soon get a new one of those. Uh, this side's quite tidy, a bit tidier than the other side. We've got a land sale, so we've got four odd tyres. It's not brilliant, is it? But for this kind of car, it doesn't really matter, does it, I suppose? You're not going to be um, threading this around some twisty B roads, are you? This, realistically, is just going to end up as probably a delivery car, isn't it? Let's have a look inside then. My remote locking works, that's good. We'll start off in the boot then, because I noticed as I walked past, my parcel shelf's missing. Wow, it's very, uh, very doggy. You can see, can't you, all the dog hairs? I know you can't smell this, but it smells just how you'd imagine, it stinks. I'm a dog lover, but my car doesn't look like this. That can be stuck back, that's no big deal. We've got the uh, headrest there. Hmm. I wonder what happened to the parcel shelf then. It's a T3 spec, so not a bad spec really. And inside is disgusting. This is really uh, particularly bad, this. Dog hairs and rubbish everywhere. Everywhere, and it stinks. It really, really stinks. Oof, especially on a warm day, this is um, quite potent. Look at all the dog hairs. Everywhere. Everywhere you look. Dog hairs. Okay, well, drop this for a full valet, I think. They'll love me there, won't they? Ah, it's come from Honiton in Devon. Never heard of that place. To be fair, I've never really been to Devon. So it had a service at Grant's Auto Service. Oh, in Barnstable, right. You know what, Barnstable, that's where, I that's where I bought, what a coincidence, that's where I bought that SL from. So I bought that SL55 AMG and a Bentley Continental GT, both very low mileage cars. The SL had done 15 when I bought it four years ago, and the Bentley GT had done 16 or 17, I think. I'm a really nice guy, a YouTube viewer. Not far from Barnstable, or Barnstable, I, I might be saying that wrong. 
I can't see it being pronounced Barnstaple. Barnstaple. Anyway, really nice part of the world. I'm waffling now, I'm aware of that. So it was serviced in October 20, which is more or less the time I bought the SL. So just after COVID. It had another full service at 72,000 miles in September 23. A full service, right. So I would assume that's all the plugs and everything. That's all right then. That was done at a place called Fairway Motors. Oh, in Glossop, right. So it's had a recent service, that's good. These engines, of course, by the way, are timing chain, uh, chain driven rather than belt. So there's no, no belt to replace. And if we look in the actual service book itself, oh yes, look at this. You know what, Toyota owners are a different breed, aren't they? So we've got, what did I say, guys? This car does not have a timing belt. It has a chain which does not need replacing unless it's damaged on a little post-it note, which makes me think the first or second owner of this car was, uh, was quite old. They leave post-it notes everywhere. Lucerne Silver, 1999, uh, 199 cloth. 11th of April, 2002. After sales contact is, I thought that said Phil Collins, as in, in the air tonight, but uh, no, it's Paul Collins. So it's come from Woodford Green, Essex. So it's got full toes of history up to 2008. Look at the mileage here. So in 2008, when it was six years old, it had done 3,800 miles. It's been serviced every 200 miles. That's unbelievable. Then we've got more services here some of which are uh, upside down. Another one in 18. PG Motors obviously uh, run out of stamps. Then another one. This has got almost full history. That's not what I was expecting at all. Well, I think guys, this car deserves to be saved. Now I know the history's there. The keys are there. The dog hair's here. We can fix that though, can't we? What treasures have we got in the glove box then? We've got a locking wheel nut. We've got a notepad here. Shorthand notebook. Is he drawing a dog? Can't stop it sometimes with the Phoenix Knights quotes or Alan Partridge. We've got, look at this. I love seeing stuff like this. In the ashtray here, we've got an almost unused cigarette lighter. Once or twice it's been used, that's it. Pop that back in there. We've got a cradle here for a Nokia. Let's have a look under the bonnet then, shall we? There are no goodies to be found though. Could do with some CDs, I haven't found a decent, oh, hang on a sec, oh no. It's not my cup of tea, that limp biscuit. Yeah, not my thing. Right. Someone's left me a nice flannel there. It's very thoughtful. I don't really even know why I'm showing you under the bonnet of these because if you own one, you rarely need to look. Well, I'm saying that, they can, they can burn a bit of oil. They're just very reliable. They're about as reliable as you can get. So back here, I don't even want to look. We've got a cover there for some, ah, that's, the, that's where the other headrest is. So we've got a full set of headrests. This will make a car, you know. It really will. I know I should know better than buying cars like this, but they just always sell. The fact that this is auto, obviously, makes it way more desirable. Let's fire up then, shall we? Foot on the brake. Revving a little bit high initially. Oh, there we go. Back down to 1500 RPM. So it's only done 77,000 miles. It's nothing, is it really? Radio station, what were they listening to? Radio 3, obviously. Air conditioning, what about that? Does it work? Does it work? It probably does. It's a Toyota, isn't it, at the end of the day? Ice cold. Ice cold air conditioning. What about my windows? Two out of two. We are... In profit here, ladies and gents. What should we do next? I shouldn't touch my mouth, should I, after being in this car? Let's go and get it on the road. Let's get it on the road then. See how it, uh, see how it drives. Make sure the gearbox changes and everything else. Then, 
We'll drop it off at the local car wash for a full valet. Then I'll have to run away very quickly because they'll not thank me for this. All right then, first time in the automatic Corolla. Let's give this a whirl. Seat forward a little bit. Select drive and we're away. Did I lock my Mercedes? Yes, I did. I can't believe that air conditioning. I'm over the moon with that. We need fuel. We're in desperate need for fuel. So I think we'll uh, pop to the BP and go and stick some unleaded in it. You know what I most like about this job? Or, you know, one of the things I like about this job is finding something like this that most people would overlook. It's the same with properties as well. I like going, looking at an old rundown place with a pink bathroom suite, because I can just, I can see beyond it all the time. And it says, oh, you come in anyway. Come on then. No choice now, have I really? Yeah, I can just see beyond the, uh, the filth. And it's the same with this little Corolla. This, actually, and I've only driven it for two minutes, drives all right. But slightly squeaky brakes, so it might want new discs and pads. But there's a bit of life left in this. I just know it. So, just hope I can get to the petrol station before we completely conk out. Nobody wants to uh, push an automatic Corolla through the village of Romley on a Sunday, do they? Somewhere here, we've got a trip computer, haven't we? Anyway, forget it. We're only going to drive half a mile and we'll be there. But yeah, it changes gear nicely. Everything seems to work. You might think I've lost the plot here completely, but just give me a little bit of credit and a little bit of time and money. And I'll get this looking nice. They do drive well, this. This era of Corolla, if you're just after a car, they're all right. Granted, the fact that it's a 1.6 petrol auto, they are a little bit thirsty than you might like, but still. It won't cost you an awful lot in repairs and stuff, so just put the fuel in and stop whinging. It's pulling slightly to the left as well. That'll be my uh, AN600 tyre, won't it? Might need a little bit of air. No, this is all right, guys. I've driven far worse, sadly. It really does stink, though, so I think once it's had its full valet, I'll let off one of those Air Vidox bombs in it. Leave that overnight. Ah, my Red Golf's on test drive. Let's stop for some fuel, then, shall we? Should be a leak. There we go. Lever for that. Right. Well, my 20 pounds is in. How much fuel have we got? Ah, three eighths. That's all right then. We haven't got a single warning light on. In fact, let me see if my engine, oh yeah, my engine light illuminates. So no one's covered it up. That's good. One thing these can suffer with is uh, bad cats. And they're quite expensive to replace. Let's continue with this little test drive then, shall we? I think I might need to invest in a new aerial as well because I can't pick up a decent radio signal. It did have a rubber surround, but I think it's perished. It does drive all right, this. Quite like it. In a funny, hairy sort of way. Very smooth. I don't really think there's much point in going any further with this, then. I need to just drop it off for a clean, don't I? Leave it for a full valley, not a mini. I can't expect them to clean this up for 15 quid. Give them the full 65, whatever they charge. Leave it for a full valet. A couple of days time, I'll pick it up, let a bomb off, and then uh, crack on with my work. I need to order some plates. I can do that on, can do that on Monday. All right. I just hope my mechanic doesn't condemn it. If it goes down there looking quite bright, it depends what the underside's like, but there were no, uh, no advisory items for rust. So, hmm, it might be all right. And bear in mind, it's only done 77. It isn't high, is it? Should be all right. It might need a couple of tires, discs and pads, things like that. But if I could spend, I hate it when I give myself a budget because I always blow it. If I give myself a but, let me give myself a budget of 600 quid. So I paid 400 for it. Budget of six, it'll owe me a thousand pounds. I think then personally, it's a 1995 car, even if it is a cat and or whatever it is, because it's 
potentially quite a decent thing with proper history, three keys. I think there's a thousand pounds profit here for me. Let me go and take this to the car wash then. Good job I've got my trainers on, isn't it? Because when I drop this off, I'm gonna have to run before I get shouted at. Right then guys, we're seconds away from the car wash. I mean, I don't know why I feel bad. It is what they advertise they do. I just, I don't like taking the mick. And it is particularly grim, this car. Ah, there's my Mini, right, I've got a lift home. That was me thinking I was gonna have to walk. I've got a little Mini 1 there. It's ready. So what we want here is number seven, full valet. Hand wash, wax, dry, tire shine, door shuts, wheel clean, windows, inside and outside. Dashboard clean, vacuum, hand body polish, shampoo seats, shampoo carpets, and an air freshener. I mentioned there are dog hair. Hello, you're right. Hello. Can I leave this for a full valet for me? Full valet. full valet, yeah, yeah, for me. Thanks. Cheers. There's lots of dog hairs in it. Right. Um, give me, give me three days. No, that's a bit optimistic. Five days. I'll see you in five days. Cheers, guys. And we're back in the cheap automatic Corolla. Now, you'll have to bear with me on this one, guys, because this isn't quite finished yet. It's something of a work in progress. You see, I suddenly remembered that I didn't have a video ready for tonight. So I've had to go down to my mechanics, snatch this one back that's not quite ready yet, and somehow finish it, or at least finish the video with it. I didn't want to let you down. I hate posting, oh, sorry, something's cropped up and I couldn't do a video for tonight. I don't like to do that. So here we are in my semi-finished automatic Corolla. You see what happens when I film these videos? I film the intro part, then the car goes off for work, and then I film the, the final bit, the ending. So it's quite straightforward. But used cars, well, they never seem to go to plan. They always throw up something that you didn't really predict. So at any one time, I've usually got about a dozen intros done and cars sent off being prepared, waiting to be finished. So there's usually always one that's just coming back that I can finish and then throw the video up. That's how it works let you in behind the scenes there, didn't I? But on this here day, the 29th day of May, the year of our Lord, 2024, I didn't have one ready. So let me tell you where I'm up to with this Corolla. After we last spoke, I took it down to my local car wash for a full valet. It was very doggy, very doggy. I don't know how they tackle those rear seats, to be honest, presumably with some sort of Gillette or Wilkinson sword. Anyway, they have done a really good job. So from there, I ordered some reg plates from Harrods, the local motor spares place, not the uh, Mohammed Al fired one. And annoyingly, when the reg plates came, whoever's made the reg plates, I ordered about eight sets all in one go. The rest were fine, but the, the one set on this Corolla, there was no space. So we've got some illegally spaced plates here. So I called them up and told them, anyway, they've made me a fresh set, which are down here. I haven't had a chance to fit them yet, but I'm on with it. I fitted the Miss Space ones because they arrived this morning and I was in a bit of a rush. So I thought, well, they'll do for now. You can see how things sometimes just don't go to plan, can't you? And I'm not passing the butt, but it's usually never my fault either. In fact, on the subject of plates, I'll tell you a funny story. I'm not mocking anyone, by the way, before you all get uh, worked up in the comments section, but I used to use a plate company and I'd call up, it was when I was at my old site five or six years ago, I'd call up with 10 cars that had just arrived. So, right. Could you do me a plate for Alpha Juliet 59, Delta Charlie Oscar? Right, fine. So I just fire off all these regs and then they'd get delivered all in a bundle. But the plate maker they employed at the time was dyslexic. You can imagine, can you? I got so many incorrect plates. This one time actually, I didn't even check, but I fitted them to a Kia Sportage and the Kia Sportage was in stock then for about three months eventually sold, and the guy said, uh, called up and he said, I've just tried to get an insurance quote for that Kia Sportage that I've left a deposit on, but it's coming up as a Renault Clio. So I thought, well, that's strange. Anyway, it was the dyslexic plate maker's fault, not mine. After I'd fitted the incorrect plates to this Corolla, I took it down to Jimmy the Magician, who for 20 pounds buffed the headlamps for me, and they've come up looking like new. I knew they would. So it was starting to look a bit better. I peeled the GB sticker off the back, and it was just looking a whole lot tidier with its fresh plates, albeit misspaced, and it's now buffed headlamps. It was looking a whole lot brighter. 
So I ran it down to my mechanics. When did I do that? Oh, this morning, this morning, before I realized the rush for a video and asked them to do a service, a general check over, an MOT with no advisory items. Also, it needs a battery because it was left at the car wash for a few days while it was drying out. And well, I think, no, I think it's just a coincidence. The battery's died, which is why I haven't been able to turn this one off yet because then it clicks. So I ordered a new battery for it. When I dropped it off at my mechanics, I asked them to check it over and just do a list of things that it needed, which I've got here. So what I'm going to do is park up somewhere scenic and talk you through everything that's wrong with it, which isn't all right. There are a few points there, but there's nothing too serious. So after I finish filming today, I'm going to take it back down to my mechanics, crack on with the work, and then I shall have a fully completed, fully prepared, automatic, I was going to say Renault Clio, Toyota Corolla. But my kid in a Renault Clio wouldn't last 22 years, would it? So apologies guys for my unpreparedness in today's video, but sometimes you've got to just roll with it, haven't you? To paraphrase Liam and Noel. It's quite incredible really that 22 years later, this car's still going strong. This ordinary car that no one's probably looked after or loved really. You know, I was out recently in my SL55, I took it up to the Lake District, and that's a beautiful car, but that's been pampered. So it's the same age as this, but it's always been garaged, it's been looked after. Whereas I bet this hasn't, this will have been street parked, and yet it still starts on the key. Well, with a new battery it will. It's three o'clock already, we are cutting this fine. Well, here we'll do then. Right, let me talk you through what my mechanic found. Are you ready? I'll leave it running, because otherwise we'd be stranded here. Sorry, Greta, if you're watching. Okay, first thing then, um, near side repeater cover missing. We knew that already, didn't we? That's about six pounds from Toyota, so that's been ordered. Offside, oh, right, it needs a bulb. Offside headlamp, uh, the bulb's gone, okay, simple. Wipers are worn, so I ordered a new set of wipers. So of my quite lengthy list, the first three things are, um, all sorted for less than 20 quid. The rear brake discs are worn, which I think I pointed that out in the intro for this video. The near side front anti-roll bar drop link uh, is worn, so that's gonna be replaced. Uh, there's a slight oil leak from the back of the engine. They're gonna clean that off and then monitor it. And last but not least, the rear lamps are damp with water. So we're gonna dry those out. And again, just keep drying it. I suspect it's because it's had a full sort of detailed valet at my local car wash. And they do sort of go mad with the pressure washer there. So I expect that's what's happened. But apart from that, she said it was all all right, which is pretty good going, isn't it, for a car of this age? So I expect I'll be left with a bill of, what's that gonna cost me? Service, 50, 60 quid plus that. I would have thought I'd be left with a bill of around 200 pounds. So this car owes me four, plus the valet was 70, that's 470, plus 200 pounds worth mechanics, plus plates. So we're talking, what, five, 700 pounds maybe? And I'm fairly certain there's a thousand pounds profit in this car. There just is a lowish mileage automatic Corolla petrol. There just is. It doesn't matter that it's been involved in an accident. I shall make everyone aware of that in my advert. I'm not trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes. But yeah, it should live to fight another day or deliver somebody's uh, pizza, which will probably be what happens to it. They're very popular with delivery drivers these, aren't they? Right, well, I think that's about it, guys. So thank you once again for watching. Apologies for the uh, the rush nature of this video. Uh, where am I up to? You can tell I'm all flustered, can't you? Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'll leave the links below. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Cheers, guys.